Hello everyone, I'm Su Yuan. Uh, in this tutorial, I'll talk about a very interesting problem in online algorithm, which is the randomized weighted majority algorithm. Uh, so basically, um, we have a type of question which can be answered by uh, yes or no. And we can predict the answer based on the opinions of some experts. And here an expert is not someone who knows everything magically. There are just some sources of opinions, and we want to predict as much correctly as we can based on their opinion. All right. So for example, we want to predict or whether Twitter's stock price will go up or down <clears throat> on the next day. And you can imagine that there are some financial experts out there on Wall Street, and they have their own opinions. And we listen to their advice, but we have to make our own decision. All right? And in the real world, there's no way that someone can predict 100% correctly. But if somehow we know which one of these experts is the best, we can just follow his own prediction and ignore the others. However, the problem is that we have no idea which one of them is the best, right? So what am I going to do? Uh, I want our prediction is nearly as well as the best expert in hindsight. And that is our motivation. Um, here comes an interesting algorithm called the weighted majority algorithm. And the intuition behind this is that we maintain a list of ways uh, on each expert. All right. So if an expert makes a mistake, we uh, lower his weight. And if he makes a lot of mistakes, uh, his opinion should not be taken seriously afterwards, intuitively. And the detail of this algorithm is as follows. Um, initially, all the experts have the same weight, which is uh, exactly 1. And uh, we predict based on the weighted majority vote. Uh, so basically, we have two candidates to answer, a yes or no. Or here we use up or down, but they are the same meaning. Um, we sum up the weight for each answer. And whichever has the higher value should be output as the final prediction. And we also compare the truth with each expert's opinion, and we penalize those who make the mistake by uh, having their weight. Um, let's illustrate the algorithm by an example here. So uh, at the very first day, um, each expert has exactly the same weight, which is 1, as we said before. And we uh, take the majority votes, which goes to down. So we predict down on the very first day. But it turns out that the stock price on the first day goes up. So we know that three of them has a mistake. And we have to penalize them following the uh, algorithm. So on the next day, all of them have a weight only uh, 0 0.5. And when did not make a mistake, uh, his, his weight still uh, remains the same. That's not changed at all. And we just follow this, this path, so on and so forth. Okay. So how good is this algorithm? Uh, we need an analysis on the performance. And let's say totally we have an N experts. All right. Uh, since everyone's weights are initially initially one, the total uh, total weights initially is N, of course. And we um, along uh, along a series of trials, a series of predictions. Uh, we use big M here to denote the number of mistakes our algorithm makes, and the little m to represent the number of mistakes for the best experts made. And our goal is that uh, we don't want our big M here to be too far away from the small m. All right. So here's what happens. Uh, if the weighted majority algorithm makes a mistake, it is actually the weighted majority that makes the mistake. In other words, at least half of the weights goes wrong, all right? And we have to penalize them by cutting in half uh, by, uh, by the algorithm. And so one-fourth of the total weights have to be eliminated as long as our algorithm makes a mistake. In other words, the total weight W in the next round, the next W, is at most three-fourths of the current value, current W. Since initially, the total weight is N, and we have M mistakes, so the final weight of W should be less or equal than n times 3 fourths to the n. Right. And on the other hand, uh, for the best expert so far, it makes m mistakes. So its weight is exactly 1 over 2 to the m. And we know that the weight for the best expert is only part of the total weight. So the w, big W, should be greater or equal than 1 over 2 to the m. And by simply, uh, simply by combining 1, 2, we take the log of both sides, and we have the following upper bound for m. So this inequality here actually gives an upper bound of m with respect to the best expert's mistake number. Let's say 
Uh, if the best expert makes a 10% uh, mistakes, then our algorithm will roughly make a 25% uh, um, mistake rate. Okay. But sometimes the constant here, 2.41, is not good enough. So imagine uh, what will happen if m is 20%. Then upper bound will be roughly about 50%, uh, which is almost like a random guess by uh, flipping a coin, right? So we actually need a better upper bound, or we can say we need a uh, somehow smaller constant instead of 2.41 here. So what should I do? Um, actually, the intuition behind a better algorithm is to use randomization. And instead of predicting based on the weighted majority rules, we can also view a weight of each expert as the probability for it to be picked up, to be followed, or to be trusted. All right. And in addition to the randomization, instead of cutting by half, uh, we can also use another parameter to control the speed of weight decay. So here's the detail of the randomized weighted majority algorithm. Once again, initially, all experts had the same value, which is 1. And given the size of predictions, x1, x2, to the xn, by these experts, we somehow output only one of them, namely xi, with the probability pi, which is defined by uh, wi over w, which is the uh, total weight. All right. So essentially, what we'll do is just, we just normalize the weights to obtain a multinomial probability distribution over all of these experts. And we choose only one of them by following this multinomial probability distribution. And no matter which one is chosen, his opinion becomes my opinion. And the algorithm tells me uh, I should output it. Right? And of course, uh, we also need to penalize those experts who made the mistake, uh, multiplying their weights by uh, 1 minus epsilon here. And here, the epsilon is the uh, fraction of weight reduction. Well, that's all about the algorithm. The next question is, uh, how does it perform? We also need, need a, uh, an uh, analysis. Okay. So the good news is that the randomized algorithm actually outperformed the simple algorithm we just discussed before. Now think about this process. In each trial, we have some fraction of weights on the wrong side, on the wrong answer. And we let fi to be that fraction at the f trial. All right. So fi here is not only the fraction of the wrong weight. It is also the probability within each trial of our algorithm to make a wrong prediction. In other words, it is the expected number of mistakes in this specific trial, in this specific round, by following the property of Bernoulli distribution. Right. Therefore, mathematically, we know that the expected number of the total mistakes, which is the big M we define here, should be the sum of all the fi so far at this point. The mistakes is always related to the penalty. So in each trial, we remove epsilon times fi uh, of the total weight. And initially, the weight is n. So after a trial, a series of trials, uh, the current total weight w is given by this equation. Once again, we look at the best experts, and uh, its weight should be exactly 1 minus epsilon to the little m. And its weight is also only a part of the total weight, of course, so therefore, again, uh, we have this equation here. And we just take the natural uh, log of both sides, and we use the fact that a minus log 1 minus x is actually greater than x to simplify the result. And here is finally what we got m also can be bounded by some other constant uh, of m. And that constant is a uh, function, actually, of the epsilon we can set. So um, the right-hand side looks strange, actually, at the very first sight. But we can take some, we can plug in some, some, some numbers to the epsilon to see what happens here. So if epsilon is 1 over 2, the constant before m is 1.39. If epsilon is 1 over 4, uh, the number decreased to 1.15, and if this one is 1 over 8, it is uh, near, it is actually closer to 1, which is 1.07. So basically, as the uh, epsilon decrease, the constant before m is closer to 1, which indicates that our randomized algorithm performs almost as well as the best experts. So um, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching.